be. This is why you have people help you. Can you hear me now? Is that so good? It's fine. So I don't have earphones. I usually have earphones and they died. <laughs> Apparently they got overused. So I'm using my computer recording, which actually has been working fine. So I am going to introduce Amber Curry of Rocky Mountain Homeopathy. And she is here to help me talk about first aid kit essentials. And uh, she's a nationally certified classical homeopath. She's gonna explain to you a little more what that is about if you don't know. Uh, she's been in private practice for about 13 years in Loveland. Um, Amber's professional work is with humans, but her personal life is usually included with her dog, Eli, who is a nine-year-old rescue mutt. He loves hiking, quality, quality food, I love that, feeling good, uh, just like Amber does. And three things you may not know about her, because this is the first time you may have met her, but for me, in her 20s, she repelled into a 1,200 foot deep cave in the rainforest using a singe rope, I have no idea what that is. And then- Oh, single rope. Oh, single rope, and then climbed back up. That's impressive. And then her second cousin is Michael Nesmith of the 70s group, The Monkees, which is also cool. And uh, she was home, a homeschooling mom for 14 years, which right now, there are a lot of those right now. Yes, but I did it on purpose. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and um, I will introduce Jennifer. She's a certified veterinary technician since 2006. And way back in 2017, she started using her knowledge as a certified canine fitness trainer to help strengthen dogs and prevent injury and promote human dog bonding. She values the relationships that she has with her doggy clients. And so unique things you may not know about Jen is she once played an April Fool's joke on her dad that lasted 24 hours over three countries. I want to know more. <laughs> <laughs> um, she loves to dance and she used to be a very good violin player. So. Yes, I, I've tried to, I'm trying to pick it back up again because I'd like to be a good fiddle player, so. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> no, right? Yeah. All right, so, go ahead. Yeah, I just thought, you know, we could start off talking about what we've experienced. Um, my experience has been mostly hanging out with my dog, hiking with my dog, taking my dog around town. And the most likely injury that she will have is to step on a goat head, a goat head or a thorn, something like that, and um, get hobbled by it. I mean, that happens pretty frequently certain times of the year because she really hates boots. I wish she would wear booties, but she refuses. <laughs> she looks pretty hilarious when I try to put them on. Um, so I wanted to talk about, you know, what I do for that. And then I'd like to hear, you know, what you would do as a vet tech. So um, the number one thing, of course, is to pay attention to your dog and to notice when your dog is hobbled, right? Um, and then I'll check all her feet and remove the offending whatever it is and if it was a deep wound then when we, then i would give her a um a couple of pellets of homeopathic leadum so i should oh i should show you my homeopathy kit so you know what i'm talking about i know i was like wait we share kits first <laughs> yeah so this is my travel kit got a little sticker of a kitty on it right okay, and this is what's inside. Lots of little vials of homeopathic remedies. Okay. And what homeopathic do, remedies. What do one of those vials look like? What? What do one of those vials look like? Let me pull one out. Let's see. I will pull out the first one. Okay. So there you go. Can you? Whoops. Well, that's that's how big it is. Okay. And inside it has these little white pellets. They taste delicious. They're not hard to give to they humans or animals. Mm -hmm. They do taste delicious. <laughs> yeah. And 
And what I do if I'm giving one to my dog is I just pull her cheek back and put a couple of pellets in there. Uh, and here I should talk a little bit more about what homeopathy is. So homeopathic remedies are made of nano doses of substances from nature. So they're non-toxic, they're hypoallergenic, they don't have side effects. And they're pretty easy to find. Most any health food store will have them. And oops, let me grab this. I brought this one because this is mostly the kind of thing that you'll see on homeopathic remedies packaged like this in the health food store. Okay. Orion brand. Yeah, they're good. So what would you do if you were there and your dog got hobbled? Got hobbled? <laughs> right. So um, first, our disclaimer, you know, we're not, we're not treating, we're not diagnosing. If there's anything serious with your pet and any injury, of course, you want to call your veterinarian. We're purely trying to give you guys some tools and education. And as a veterinary technician, uh, you know, hiking out there in our mountain and hills, we have cactus, goat heads for sure. Um, those bull heads, I think those big round, those, they're big and round. Anyhow, they're almost worse than a goat head. <laughs> you can really get stuck in there. And so, like you said, the first thing is monitoring and observing your dog, right? Because a lot of people are out there hiking and they're not even paying attention to what their dog is doing. And their dog's back there like doing this thing <laughs> because they've got something in their foot. So first pay attention to your dog when they're walking. And if they've got a limp or something going on, then check their pads. And sometimes the one that you think is the limping is the source, sometimes it's the opposite one. So I check all, all pads when I'm assessing a goat head or some kind of injury, or that's not what I was working for, um, some kind of sticking injury. Because, you know, it could be a stick, a little tiny stick or something, uh, a little tiny pine needle, right? So once I do that, I take it out, I make sure there's no like deeper wounds that I need to deal with. Um, and then, yeah, if there are, I would use a booty so that we could get down the hill or wherever we're going so they don't get packed in with dirt and they don't get infected. And yes, using a booty can be a, ch a challenge sometimes. So that's, you know, I have my first aid kit. This is mine here. This is my in-house first aid kit. But if I was out on the trail, you know, I would probably have a little four by four and um, some vet wrap or elastic wrap. So I probably should have taken this out. Whoop. Little elastic wrap. So that if I didn't have a booty, I could slap some of this on their foot and it wouldn't be infected. And the nice thing about this vet wrap, if you haven't ever used it, is it's very elastic, but it also sticks on itself. And it sticks on itself multiple times. Like you can do this a lot and generally it sticks on itself pretty well. Um, I, we figured we could probably have a, I could have a whole talk about just putting a bandage on your foot, but, <laughs> but just doing a light wrap so you can get down the mountain so they don't get more um, injury to their pad, depending on how deep it is. You know, and then you can always have a little bit of antibacterial gel if you wanted to put that in there, um, a little calendula cream, um, arnica cream, which all helps. Actually, um I brought some calendula cream. This is the little travel size. Can you hold it a little closer? Hmm, hold it a little closer. Yeah. There it is. Okay. And what calendula cream does is a couple of things. It's not an antibiotic, so it doesn't kill any germs. But because of that, it also doesn't kill any skin cells, which happens with things like hydrogen peroxide or alcohol or those kinds of things. And it can actually slow down the healing a little bit. Calendula cream discourages the growth of um, additional bacteria and it also stimulates the growth of skin and it feels really soothing. So, you know, if you've got a bigger wound, probably it would be a good idea to put a little dab on there for just, you know, a tiny little pine needle. Ah. That's, but that's, that's a judgment call, right? You're there, you're the first responder, you have to decide. Yep, definitely, you have to decide. 
Um, you know, and, and what if we're dealing with a deeper puncture wound? Are there some mm -hmm. remedies for that? Well, um, a, for a deeper puncture wound, I like um, homeopathic leadum. Yep. And that's L-E-D-U-M. Maybe I'll type it in the messenger, in, in the message area there. Uh, homeopathic leadum is great for puncture wounds for both humans and animals and helps to keep it from getting infected and stimulate healing. The tricky thing that can happen sometimes when you've got a little sticker or whatever, goat head, et cetera type thing, is sometimes you don't quite get the whole thing out, right? You would have to per, uh, perform minor surgery to get that out. And so what I would try homeopathically before that is a homeopathic silica. And um, homeopathic silica is really great for helping to expel things, foreign objects from the body, like little, little, um, little sticks or little stickers. Yeah. It was like that, you know, the, the very end of the sticker can break off. Yeah. Yeah. Works on humans too. Right. I mean, a lot of these do too, right? So you have stuff for your pet in your little first aid kit, but a lot of it you can also use for yourself because we get scraped out there as well. Like, you know, I've been walking and a, rut, a bush scrapes my face or something. So, or I fall down because I'm not paying attention or I trip over a rock. So, you know, so you can also use, you know, the elasticon, the, um, the gauze wraps, the calendula, like you can use that for yourself as well, which is nice. So that's yeah. a so in these things that we're talking about, um, the two other things we're going to talk about as well, it's just, it's some of the things you guys are going to see in the spring, right? Because we're out doing things again with our mask on. <laughs> <laughs> One day there will not be any mask, but. <laughs> so then we, our next thing to talk about was bee stings. Because I've already seen bees out and um, bees or wasps. So the difference between bees and wasps are bees can leave the stinger in when they sting them. And so the nice thing to have in your first aid kit is tweezers so that you can get that stinger out. Um, but also if you have ticks or something, you can use tweezers for that as well. But also with bee stings, you want to be careful because their, their little nose can swell up depending on where they're stung at. But the face is the more important. And of course, like if your dog is having respiratory issues, get them to the vet, call the vet. Um, depending on how far you are distance wise, like if you live way out east or you know, you live way out on a farm and it's several hours to get to the vet, you may just call your vet and they may assist you on what to do next. But in the meantime, what you can do is put a cool rag on their face because ice works just as well for animals as it does for humans to help decrease inflammation. And a lot of dogs don't like ice on their face, <laughs> but you could do like a cool rag. Um, and a lot of times it feels good too, and they'll, they'll kind of settle down. Um, and so you just want to make sure that they're breathing well, if it's in their face, if it's in their paws, um, cause that's the other place they can get it. Uh, you know, cause they're swatting at them or if they're a cat, they're swatting at them. We talk a lot about dogs, but if they're a cat, they can also get stung by a bee. Uh, so keeping an eye on the swelling to make sure it's, it's not getting to the point to where you need to rush them to the ER. Um, and every animal is different, like every human, right? Every animal that gets stung by a bee or wasp is not going to react the same than another animal. And so really it's monitoring your animal's symptoms, um, depending on what injury they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my favorite tool for bee stings is homeopathic apis. And that's APIS. I'll put it into the, the chat there. And um, that is actually a homeopathic preparation of B. And so it works really well for stings and it helps with both the pain and the swelling. Of course, we are most concerned with the swelling, but nobody likes to be in pain and nobody likes to see, you know, their their animal be in pain either. So for that reason, I would probably give a couple of pellets of Apis right away, regardless, because with homeopathic um, medicines, the faster that you can react, 
the less the body has to recover from. And I think that's probably true for all kinds of first aid, right? But if you wait longer until the swelling is greater, then it's still gonna be more work for that animal's body to recover from the swelling and to bring it back down. And APIS will help with that, but I just think it's nicer if you can intervene quickly so that the swelling is minimized. Now, there's another remedy to keep in mind if it's a true allergic reaction. Um, have you seen that in a dog, Jen? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It usually it causes severe respiratory signs. Right. And so the remedy that we think of first for that is uh, a remedy called carbolic acid. Yep. And these are remedies that you can pick up in the little blue tube or a bottle at the health food store. Okay. And generally speaking, I like the, um, the lowest potency for, for animals because they tend to respond really beautifully and you don't need more than the lowest potency to get good responses from them. And in the health food store, that's usually a 6C or 6X. But if all you can find is a 30C at your health food store, well, that's okay. Yeah, and something like if you give your animal homeopathy, and so say you gave it some apis, it's not going to hurt them. Just if their body can't utilize it, it, it just won't utilize it. It'll just go through the system. So that's a nice thing about homeopathy is that it's what your body needs. And so if your body needs apis, it'll use it to heal. And if it doesn't need it, then it just expels it. So you don't have to worry about some of the problems that can come with um, using drugs. Right, but you still don't want to give it over and over and over again, right? That's an important point, mm -hmm. um, generally speaking. Okay, if, let's, let's go back to the bee sting example. If you had a dog who got stung and started swelling up and you gave apis and then the swelling went down a bit, but then it started coming back up again later, you could repeat the apis, right, as needed. But you wouldn't just keep giving the apis because it was good one time, right? And if you've got swelling that keeps coming back up and you can get to a vet, you should, right? You should go to the vet. But you can do that on the way to the vet um, as your first thing to do. And that's going to really help improve your outcome a lot of the times. Yes. Yeah. All good points. Yeah. 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 And your vet too, they may, because a lot of vets too, if you call them, they may say take some antihistamine as well. And taking that with the homeopathy, there's no like contraindications or anything. Right. I mean, that was one of the things we wanted to talk about is that there's this idea that you can only choose like one kind of medicine, mm. right? It's antibiotics or it's homeopathy. And that's just silly. I mean, that's like saying you can only root for one team um, when you're watching football. Okay, maybe I'm getting into a danger zone here. <laughs> <laughs> But you can actually use these things together. Um, homeopathy is never going to interfere with the action of any other um, conventional drug. So it, it just because you used homeopathy doesn't mean later on you can't use whatever you need to use. Yeah. And mm -hmm. vice versa. I mean, in other countries, homeopathy is used right alongside conventional medicine in hospitals and emergency rooms. So it works. So it does yeah. for first aid too. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing for first aid is that you have a lot of tools and you decide which tools are best for you, um, but you can use them in conjunction with each other. So, yeah. Yeah. So what else do we see in the spring, Jen? We see some vomiting and diarrhea. <laughs> uh, yay. Uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, if you're out there hiking in the Colorado mountains, you may have giardia. Um, or other intestinal parasites uh, that we have out there. Um, they may get into things. You may have a dog that likes to eat things um, that doesn't agree with their GI, and so you have vomiting or diarrhea. Uh, we've all experienced that if we've had dogs. Um, and, you know, if you've had cats, they can do some vomiting and diarrhea as well. Um, most other pets as well, like all these tips we're using, we talk a lot about dogs because we have dogs, and, but a lot of these tips can also be worked, used for other pets as well, as far as bandaging and homeopathy. Um, 
So yeah, so one of the remedies we've already talked about you can use for uh, vomiting. Well, are you talking about silica? Talking about silica. See, this is why so, I have a chamber because I don't always get these right. <laughs> actually, like, I wouldn't use silica for vomiting. I would use it for a situation where we would like the dog to vomit, but it hasn't. Okay, so my story is with my crazy rescue dog, when she was a puppy, she ate everything. I, I mean, shoes, um, the back deck, and um, one time, a quarter. And generally speaking, she threw up, right, what she needed after she ate those things. And I was happy to have the shoe leather come back up, right, because this is not digestible. And we wanted it out of the puppy. But one time, she got into some duct tape right you, you know the the stuff you fix everything with yeah and it did not come up and i was i don't know that for some reason it really she was acting like she didn't feel good you know she was lethargic and you know it, it just it, and she wasn't throwing up and so i was worried and i took her to the vet hospital and just our timing was such they were very busy and we waited for quite a while but the person who did the the scans of you know would it be an MRI, a doggy? Maybe not an MRI, maybe a CAT scan? Yeah, usually an X-ray. X, okay, anyway, the, the, per, the tech was going home, and so the doctor came out and said, listen, why don't you just give it overnight? Maybe it'll pass, and if not, come back tomorrow if you're still worried. Okay, so we went back home, and I thought of homeopathic silica, right? Because remember, I said it's good for expelling foreign bodies. Well, it's also good for expelling um, things that have been eaten and don't belong in the body. And so I, I thought of that after I got home and I gave her two pallets in her little cheek pocket. Her eyes got really big and she ran to the back door and out it came. She did not throw up. It went out the other end. Um, but then we'd have to go back to the veterinary hospital, which was great because it was going to be $300 for the x-ray and do you know what I mean? It wouldn't have been fun. And I, I worry about side effects for, for dogs as well as people. So, you know, that's something to think about if something needs to leave the body, right? Silica. <laughs> and, you know, check with the vet too, if, the, if it does not leave the body or, you, um, you know, you're, you have other concerns. But for, for vomiting and um, diarrhea, the most important remedy that I want people to know about is homeopathic arsenicum. And obviously vomiting serves a purpose in the body. It expels things that need to go out. But sometimes what happens is um, that's not enough. It's not successful. If you've had the stomach flu, you know what I'm talking about, right? It could just go on and on and on. And you doggies get get similar situations and after a while it just becomes exhausting you start running the risk of dehydration and like it's just a bad situation and um arsenicum is one that can help the body to reestablish homeostasis come back in balance and kind of shut down that cycle of you know um not unproductive vomiting and diarrhea and if your dog has actually gotten into something that's toxic, which happens sometimes, um, you know, hopefully you will never have that happen, but it, it does happen. Um, arsenicum can actually be a lifesaver. Yet you still want to go to the vet and get checked out and make sure everything's okay. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's an important remedy to have around for, you know, let's say first aid, vomiting and diarrhea, but also, you know, if they've eaten something and the situation could degrade to something more serious, arsenicum, um, may help you to intervene before it gets nasty. Okay, arsenicum album. Oh, I felt it wrong. You were so close. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's not just spring, is it? No, I mean, they can get into things, you know, all throughout the year and some dogs more than others. But um, I think in springtime, we're all outside more so there's more stuff we're you know we're doing more stuff with our cars changing well usually changing oils making sure you know our fluids and so that sometimes they get into stuff like that um as well as we're out doing things in the garden in the yard and so depending again depending on the dog 
they can get into things. Um, so yeah, using yeah. them are great. And they're much, so like if you had just a standard first aid kit, if I wanted to expel something out of them, uh, like I had a dog that uh, it was Thanksgiving. So you talk about not just spring and she ate a bowl of yeast to go. And you don't want yeast to go in a dog's stomach because <laughs> it will expand. And so I took her outside right away, throw some hydrogen peroxide down her throat. She threw it up and I'm sure she, she was not feeling great. So in, you know, I don't know if silica would have helped in that instance because the body may not have seen the yeast as foreign, but it would have been something to try and have been a little less traumatic on her. And if it didn't work, then, you know, I could have used the hydrogen peroxide or gone to the vet. So, so normally, you know, if they do eat things, a lot of people have hydrogen peroxide in their kit so that they can and do some vomiting. Um, but I always say call your vet to make sure that's okay because if you have blockages, um, you know, that's something that you wanna work with your vet with, so. And the other thing that comes from vomiting and dehydrate, vomiting and diarrhea is dehydration, right? So because you have a lot of fluids going out, so you're gonna be dehydrated. And so you wanna get some electrolytes back into them. Um, my parents' dog, for, she has had some GI issues for a few months. So she's kind of had this low grade, um, occasional vomiting, no diarrhea, but occasional vomiting, and she will get dehydrated pretty quickly. Um, and so one of the things, um, there are vet electrolytes out there. Um, we actually got one recently and it was like this little packet, which was kind of cool. Um, but knowing that I use some of these remedies myself, there's one called Bioplasma Salts. And they're just these little, oh, I should have, they're in the kitchen. I should have brought it with me. They're just, they look kind of like what Amber showed earlier. They're just these little tablets. And we just put a tablet in Sadie's water a couple times a week um, so that she will stay hydrated. Now there may be something else going on and we're working with, um, like I'm working with her nutritionally and um, with the vet, you know, she got a full 100% clean health. <laughs> so, um, but if your dog is dehydrated and you need to get hydration back into them, right? So you can add some bioplasma salts to their water and that will help rehydrate them again. And they'll feel better. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Now, if things are to the point where, you know, the dog is just not doing well, right? From, from dehydration. And we've talked about the signs of dehydration dry eyes, gums that are um, dry, you know, they're not slippery and they should be, um, or skin that's loose. And then of course you're gonna observe the dog's behavior. That's really a big deal. Yeah, like that. Um, so, yeah. Is that dog, how, how's it acting? Is it just laying over there on the floor, right? And it's ordinarily an active dog. I mean, these are important signs our dog our, our animals will tell us how they feel if we pay attention through their behavior and through um the way that they look um another remedy to consider there homeopathically is one called china like the country and um, in humans it can be helpful for really terrible headaches from dehydration um, I think a lot of people have had that happen to them on hiking trips <laughs> in Colorado, that sort of thing. Um, bioplasma just helps to um, retain the water that you're taking in, and it can be really useful for um, increasing energy and helping you to hold on to the water that you're drinking. It's great. Um, China is when maybe that animal is not feeling well enough to get up and drink. Right, and um, you can use both of them. I wouldn't give them exactly at the same time. You might alternate them five minutes apart, okay? And if you don't see some rapid improvement, again, off to the vet you go, but um, I would think that a lot of the time you would see rapid improvement. How did it go for Sadie? Yeah, no, it, did. it does seem to help her. Um, she seems to drink more water too, because I know when I put, these bioplasma salt in my water, I tend to drink more of it as well. Um, I think it's a little thicker. I, I feel like the consistency is a little thicker. But yeah, no, it does help her and she doesn't seem to mind. She drinks it and she has a little bit more energy. So it's a good tool to have, especially as we're heading into summer and dogs can get overheated. That's a whole nother topic. But um, 
I had a thought that lost it. Oh yeah, and again, like all these remedies, like vomiting and diarrhea, there can be some serious stuff going on, right? Foreign bodies, parasites. So again, make sure you check with your vet, but these are good tools that you can use until you get to the vet, um, depending on how far away you are, or that you can use in conjunction to help them feel a little better, so. Well, you're always gonna be first on the scene, right? Yep. That's what first aid means is you're there first. So, you know, you do these things and you watch, you observe and you assess. Mm -hmm. Yep, right? observation and, is the thing with animals. And, and, you know, depending on your comfort level, right? So, you know, I've been practicing professionally with homeopathy for, you know, a long time. So I'm, my comfort level's high. So if I were to give this, you know, one of these remedies to my animal and things turn around and she looks good, she starts acting good, you know, she's back to her old self, I'm not gonna worry, but that's me, right? Because my level and my experience is high. For somebody who's not in that situation, you know, their appropriate behavior might be a little bit different. Right. So, that. Well, um, go ahead, were you gonna say something? Oh, there was just one more remedy that like, Everybody should have for the home uh, for first aid for their for their animals, um, whatever kind of animal it is, and that's homeopathic arnica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great if your animal um, strains uh, a muscle, you know, or falls, or has any kind of blunt trauma, um, it has a, a dog park crash. It happens. And a new sport dog. Sport dog owners that also use Arnica. Yeah, Arnica cream, Arnica, Arnica homeopathy. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer the, uh, the pellets that I showed you earlier because they're gonna cover the whole body and not just the part that you put the cream on. Arnica cream is nice, but you have to really um, put it in the right spot for it to do its work. And sometimes you don't know exactly where that bruise is because well, it's covered by fur for one thing and it hasn't really started swelling yet. So, you know, if you can get in there quickly with some Arnica, maybe it's not gonna ever swell up and turn purple and maybe they won't have to limp for as long, that sort of thing. Yeah, and it's in my toolkit for biking. Because if I fall on my bike, it's a great thing to have. <laughs> okay, so oh, yeah. we have one question in the chat, which uh, we actually didn't talk about potentially, but we will answer that question. <laughs> um, but we also want to respect your guys' time. We know it's been about a half an hour. Uh, so, um, Amber, did you want to, well, so we both just want to share with you, um, hopefully you guys gain some information out of this that can help you in your toolkit. And um, if you, so part of me and injury prevention and first aid prevention is fitness. So if you want to improve your dog's fitness, then I'm gonna put a link in the box um, that I am having basic dog fitness class so you can learn some basic exercises with your dog. And since you were here tonight, you can come try that out for free, uh, which is usually $15 a class. Um, but I'll put that in the chat. So that's my gift to you guys for being here tonight and I appreciate you being here. And I know Amber also has a gift for you as well. Sure. Um, if you would like to have in written form my favorite tips for animals, first aid, homeopathically, then the easiest way to do that is to go to my website, which is um, www.rocky-mountain-homeopathy.com. Thanks, Jen. I see you got that going. Um, and you can sign up on my homepage for my newsletter, but I want you to put in there animals. And then I'll know that you want my, um, my tips on animals because I'm not offering that to the general public, but it's a nice thing to have. And I think it's always good to have things written down. So oh. I'd love to offer that to you. And if you feel like you have an issue that you want to talk one-on-one -on -one about um, homeopathy in general, then you can also contact me there from my website and I will get in touch or you can schedule directly from my website either way. Thank you. Yeah, Amber's a wealth of information. She has done a lot for my health 
Um, so she's pretty awesome. And maybe my parents' dogs out there <laughs> soon. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, so there was a question in the chat about snake bites and it was one that I, Amber and I talked about because, um, it, like I know, like being in the veterinary profession, uh, as a certified technician, we see them in the clinic a lot this time of year. Uh, and it's, um, it's a whole, probably a half an hour topic on itself, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, if you, from a first aid standpoint, and I don't know, Amber, how much we want to get into this, but I definitely want to answer that question. Um, you know, you want to get your pet to the vet, um, for what they can do. Uh, there's an anti-venom, but it's very expensive and not all vets carry it. Um, so you're looking at like IV fluids and trying to flush the venom out of their system. But I know, yeah, Amber has. Uh, don't use all the, you know, the old Westerns, you know, bite the wound, try to extract the venom, you know, <laughs> tourniquet the limb. Don't do any of that stuff, okay? <laughs> Just get your animal some care. And so, yeah, I know this is a place where homeopathy could really help. And I know she typed in, I don't know how to say that. Lachesis. Yeah, Lachesis. Yeah, that is the very first thing that I would do. Lachesis is available at um, at the health food store. And if you've had a snack bite, I would, as soon as humanly possible, get a couple of pellets into um, your your animal's mouth. Okay. And then I would repeat it every five minutes on the way to the vet if you can get to the vet. Okay. Um, there is another homeopathic remedy called Cedron, I'll type that in. That one's a little bit harder to find. You can get it online. Uh, also, in the case of a snake bite, a 30C would be appropriate. And you could alternate those two every five minutes. And you know there have certainly been some cases where the animals were not able to get into the vet. And using these two remedies recovered fully in a pretty short amount of time. And what do those two remedies do? Well, what they do is uh, stimulate the body's own ability to detox and um, control swelling. I mean, that's a lot of the problem, right, is that the extreme swelling can occur. And it can occur in the respiratory system. It can occur in the cardiac system, right? You know, like central systems that you really need to not be swollen. And um, Lachesis is actually a homeopathic remedy made out of a Bushmaster snake venom. Right. Isn't that exotic? And it's right there in the health food store. <laughs> yeah, it's not the only thing that it's used for. Obviously, it has other, other uses, but for first aid, for, um, for, for a snake bite, that is absolutely where I would go because I don't know about anything else that works that way you know, and can work that quickly um, in any category of medicine. So that's, that's what I would do. And I always carry these things with me when I'm out, you know, in, in the mountains hiking or, or on vacation or wherever, you know, I, my little kit's not that big, but it's got um, a lot of tools in it. And even if you just can take a few tubes and stick them in the backpack, right, or your fanny pack, along with your Tweezers, which Jen reminded me should not go in your pocket because they're sharp. You could fall. <laughs> like, I'm just going to put it in my pocket. I'm like, there's bad things that can happen there. And some of them that are dull, like they, they could jab into you. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have those along with like your gauze and your bed wrap and your little fanny pack and you, you should be good to go for, for a little hike. And I know yeah. I have a travel kit similar to yours, um, but this was my in-home kit my big in-home kit. Yeah, right. And some people just keep, well, I did for many years, just a few vials in the bottom of the purse, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah, or, you know, you're, along with your Band-Aids and your aspirin. Because right. <laughs> just like we talked about with the bee stings, like snakes can, could right? Because dogs, usually dogs are the ones we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, their face gets in there and so they get bit right in the face, so. So yeah, no, that's a great question. I thought we did pretty well on that one because that, like I said, that's a topic that could be talked about. Uh, do you guys have any more questions? And I'm happy to unmute you if if you have any other questions. 
Can you see them if they raise their hand? I can. Okay. <laughs> Zoom is fun. Yes, learning all this technology. <laughs> uh, we're all getting lots of practice, aren't we? We are. Oh, Good. Jill. Go ahead, Jill. She's still muted. Oh, let me unmute. Maybe she needs to unmute herself. Oh. There you go. You're unmuted now. Okay. What, what about arthritis or if they go lame on the walk? Right. If they go lame on the walk. Arthritis is not a first aid situation. But going lame on the walk, um, the first thing I would think of is arnica. Okay. okay. So maybe uh -huh. maybe it's a strain, right? Because if this is a dog who was able to go for a walk, probably their arthritis isn't super extreme. Something happened on that walk, they, they overused or they stretched too far, something like that. I, I would go with arnica as my first choice there. I agree with you. And I mean, it's like arthritis limping right it's probably an older dog so uh with them you want to do some daily consistent exercise if you can so that when you are out there going on bigger walks um their tendons and their muscles are a little more loose and their strength is there as well um you know older i feel like a lot of our older dogs, our younger dogs too, like I've seen younger dogs limp because they're on the couch and then we go out and take them hiking and they're not used to that. So doing a little bit of daily strength exercise can make a big difference in the, in any age dog, but even arthritis, um, because I, my motto is motion is lotion. <laughs> and, and there's reports where exercise can um, reduce our age. So older people that exercise look younger so uh, that's not one of the reasons I exercise, but hey, if that's a bonus. Um, and so it's the same thing in our dogs. So like if we can keep our dogs moving, then their arthritis will be a little bit less. Um, and then yeah, Arnica is a great tool. Like when you're out there and they are limping and they got really sore because maybe for some reason we went too far because we were like, oh, we're just going to go to that next rock that was, you know, three miles longer than we figured. Um, that can help you get back to the car and then um, you can use, again, ice um, if they have any kind of swelling um, or heat, depending on what's going on. Um, and again, that's your comfort level as far as what you feel you can do first aid wise. And you can always call your vet and, um, and they can also guide you on what to do there as well. So, Can I tell a quick human story about wanting to go to the next rock? That helped, Jill. Did that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, thank you. That Arnica can also give a little burst of energy. You're welcome. When you're really tired. So when the dog is really tired, like you did try to go to that next walk. So yeah, and they're bonus. Get them back to the car. So that that helps too, because depending on how big they are, you don't have to carry them. So uh, yeah, that's, I've used Arnica. It, it works really well when I do falling things on my bike. And I have to get back up and go again. Uh, I just take a pellet under my tongue and it, it does help my body have a little bit more energy and take some of that pain away. So yeah. Your story though? Oh, that's good. Your story is perfect. So, <laughs> Same. Yeah, I keep Arnica. In fact, I was, I think my Arnica is MIA right now. And as we're talking about this, I might be in my bike saddle now that I think about it. So I'll have to check that out. So yeah. Don't leave home without it. Don't leave home without it. It's, it's a really awesome tool. Um, what, any other questions you guys have? Okay. Well, we really are grateful that you are here and um, like you have my contact info, you have Amber's contact info and um, do you have her contact info? Well, I know you got emails from me. You will get an email from Amber um, and then you will have her contact info as well so that you can connect with her if you want to. And uh, um, yeah, I just, I wanted to share my medical knowledge as well as Amber. And, you know, I'll probably do some more of these uh, with Amber as well. Um, and because there's more we could talk about first aid wise. <laughs> so yeah. And let us know, like if there's something that you guys, I know Amber's on mute, let us know, um, feel free. This is posted actually on Facebook, it's recorded. 
Um, I will post it on my YouTube channel as well. So you guys can go back and listen to it. And um, you know, you can always post in the comment, hey, can you talk about this next time if there's something that you want us to, to you know, talk about more. So. so you guys be safe out there. Have fun. Make sure you wear your mask, okay? <laughs> this is coming from an infectious disease person. It protects me from you and you from me. So it makes, makes everybody good. And, uh, uh, but also relax and have fun. We gotta start, you know, I know some of us are getting out there and doing some virtual game playing and um, neighbor distance games and stuff. So uh, yeah. And one day we will see each other and virtual hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you. You guys have a great evening. It was fun, Jen. It was fun. Thank you, Amber. See you next time. Sounds good. Bye, guys.